Hey guys, what's going on? Bobby here. Welcome back to a brand new episode in our cart rebuild series. If you missed the first episode, I highly recommend you go back and watch it. What we've done in the first episode is we took the cart all the way apart down to practically the bare chassis. Today what we're going to do is we're going to clean this entire chassis, show you guys that process, and then we'll start inspecting the chassis, see if we have any issues with it that we need to deal with before we start our reassemble process. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So here we are, we are starting our cleaning process. Just to kind of walk you guys through what we're gonna do here and skip all the junk because you don't need to see this entire cleaning process. We're gonna spray it down with this stuff right here, courtesy of Mark Schwagen, shout out for this, uh, this beautiful tip. Um, he's found that Dawn Platinum Power Wash Dish Shope. Sparkle, sparkle. Yes, I said Dish Shope. That's how we say it in my neck of the woods. This stuff is actually really good about getting the grease and gunk off of a cart. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this stuff, we're gonna do a wipe. We'll go back through, spray it again with a brush to scrub it down. And then what we're gonna do after that is we'll actually use some brake clean to get into some of the hard to reach places like in the bearing cassette. Just a nice high powered stream going in there will help spray out some of the rocks and other debris that we have in there. And then we'll go back over it one more time with a Dawn. Um, if you don't have Dawn WD-40, in addition, I will say it's good to keep this Dawn and the brake clean stuff out of your bearings. So we've had issues before where we're spraying it and we accidentally get it in an axle bearing and it just dries it out. So that's how we're going to go through and continue our cleaning process here. And it's gonna take us a hot minute. And it's going to make this turd smell like a rose. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 12 seconds later. Um, but what I did learn in our process right here of taking this bolt out is we very visibly have a crack here. The weld actually goes here and then there's a weld on the back side. You can see where it's very clearly actually probably it's cracked on this side. Oh, yeah, if you there it is. if you can take a look, it's pretty much this entire weld on the back side is cracked, which means the entire axle. The, oh, yeah, you can see it. Everything's messed up here. So once we get this chassis cleaned up, this whole uh, frame is gonna have to go to Margay to get a reweld job done on it. So it's good to note that you can see sometimes cracks like this with just tearing down before you even start cleaning it. So. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, we have found a crack in the chassis. stuff back here. I can make a birthday cake out of that. Look at all that frosting. Oh, get, get back here on the cassette right there. Look at, look at all that. Oh, you see it? Oh yeah. boy. Oh. God. I, this is the closest to throwing up I've come in this entire series. <laughs> oh. <gasps> uh, uh. So we finally got the bearing off here. I know that was a little unorthodox. We want to be a little bit more gentle when trying to remove the bearing. We knew that we were probably going to replace these anyways, but we're going to examine this real quick and make sure that, you know, see if Lauer had any bearing issues. Um, typically when you go to replace a bearing, you also want to replace the bearing cassette too, which is this metal piece that the bearing sits into. As you can see, there's these little channels right here, and that's where you can actually take the bearing in and out of the cassette. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna slide this out and over, pull the bearing out. We're gonna have to replace the cassette. But as we kind of have this bearing here, I mentioned earlier in the series that we'll be able to feel any kind of crunching or it doesn't want to roll smoothly, but I don't feel anything, I don't hear anything. When we spin it, it still feels like a really good bearing. So we may actually end up just kind of cleaning this one up, keeping it as a spare if we do run into issues uh, with any future bearings. But 
Um, definitely didn't have any bearing issues with this side. Once again, not very uh, technically oh, acclaimed <laughs> process here. Here is our last bearing. This is really the last piece that we need to examine. Um, as far as replacing anything, the rotor looked really straight. I didn't bend that in the uh, tear off procedure, so it's still straight. We're good to use that. Sprocket, obviously this assembly looks pretty good still too. I may just, if for cosmetic reasons, you can replace these plastics. They'll get tore up over time if you run over a curb or something. It's a cheap fix, just more like a cosmetic thing than anything. If we take a look here at our last bearing, this thing actually rolls a little bit better than the other one. So his bearings seem to be really good. There's no crunching, no sounds or feelings of anything binding in the bearing. So that's a really good sign too. So we can at least say that Lauer confidently didn't have any um, bearing problems in the rear axle. But since we're this far, we might as well go ahead and just replace them anyways. Um, $33 I believe or so for one bearing. It's the going rate when this video came out. It's the beautiful thing about Ignite Racing is if you were coming across this bearing and it was still really nice, you don't have to worry about replacing it. You can keep it in there. It's still a good bearing but I know that the chance of this going bad during the season, this coming season, is pretty high since it's already had two seasons, three seasons on it. So peace of mind, I'm gonna go ahead and replace that. All right, now our cleaning process is done. Now we begin the inspection process, which a little bit of a spoiler alert, we've already done this but I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through things that you need to look for and tell you what we've already found with this chassis. Starting in the rear, now these carts have had some issues with cracks in the chassis. Um, it's not a super common issue, but we do see it. And when it does happen, there's a couple different spots that you need to look for. With the motor being mounted here, it's a very kind of common spot to see it. Usually you'll see it here in this intersection right here in the chassis that's why they've added that support structure there um, because with the motor right here this is where a lot of the pressure is being put on the cart and you'll also see it in here in the cassettes which we've already discussed here when we discovered it that we do have the crack here in the chassis you can hear that and now we move up to the front of the chassis um, one thing that we found here was a missing floor pan bolt. There was actually a zip tie here that Lauer placed. Um, zip ties are not solutions for floor pan bolts. Um, I've tried that trick before. There's another common theme we saw in our mid-season rebuild. Um, it, it's very important that you have all the floor pan bolts in. It's, it's not as important as, let's say, the seat being loose, but it's definitely, you know, every little bit adds up, and having this moving on us isn't going to be helping us at all. Um, as for mentioned as well, we had a loose spindle issue. So you can kind of hear, and if you actually look up here at top, you can actually see the whole bolt moving, which is not good. You want that tight where that bolt isn't moving. And then if we go on this other side here, I believe it's tighter. It still has a little bit of movement, but the bolt's not moving. This is still a little loose. I'm probably going to do a quarter turn or so on that. That guy needs some work though. Um, as far as anything else in the front, we will do a sniper alignment on the front. We're already here at this point. Uh, doing an alignment in the front end is something easy and simple you can do in between races. We didn't come this far just to come this far, so we're going to do a front end alignment. And the last thing that we notice is up here at the very front, the brake pedal here is kind of abnormally loose. Um, once again, the whole bolt's kind of moving. This isn't something that I think Lauer has ever replaced or had to worry about retightening it, but that's concerning. When we go over here to the throttle cable, this is about the looseness that you want. You don't want them over tight, but you don't want them this loose. And the brakes, if you lose the brake pedal, 
I've seen what happens there and it's not a good time. So really there's four major issues that we found with the cart once we got it down, cleaned it and inspected it. We found the bearing back here, cassette holder is cracked. Major issue with the cart. Second thing is we're missing floor pan bolts. Third thing is the brake pedal is very loose. And the fourth thing obviously being the loose spindles. Uh, once we fix those four issues, I'm very confident that this cart will be back in tip top shape. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this episode. We've cleaned the chassis, we've done our inspection process. Next step for us is we're gonna take this chassis, we're gonna send it to Margay. What they're gonna do is they're gonna weld the spot in the chassis that is cracked. Also, I'm gonna have him put it on the chassis table, make sure there's nothing tweaked in the chassis. If he had a major front end impact, side impact, we could see that the chassis is actually bent entirely. So while it's at Margay, while it's at the factory, might as well make sure the chassis is in good condition. Next episode, we're gonna start our reassemble process. So if you're interested in that, make sure to click the subscribe button. Don't miss that next episode. Also, I wanna remind you guys of the Bobby Krug Racing Services. Check out the link down below. We're gonna arrive and drive this chassis during the 2023 season, and I'll also be offering mechanical services and driver coaching services as well. So for more information on that, check the link in the description. I'll see you in the next one. Sailor Ring. Man, trailer of Sailor Ring. Ain't got no cigarettes, but trailer of.